let me show you is and as. I'm going to say base b gets new derived. This is probably one of the first examples you see whenever you're taught inheritance in any basic programming course. I have a b reference, and it can reference a derived because derived inherits base. Very good. All right, we've already seen I can say base, or not base b, I can say derived. Derived d gets b, and the compiler will complain and say, hey, uh, B could be referencing a derived, it could be referencing a base, it could be referencing something else that inherits base. There's no guarantee here, and all I know about B is that it's a base. I cannot see this. It is dead to me. It's gone. It is invisible, because this code right here is something that executes at runtime. That is the runtime type. It is the type that exists when you actually make this code run on your CPU. Okay, anyway, the compiler's like, no, can't do that. Now, we can be explicit here and say, oh, okay, it's, it really is a derived, right? So just go for it. Okay, and if I'm as sure as I am, which I am, this is new derived, okay, I am sure that it's a derived. So I'm, I feel totally fine with this cast. I can run this program, and it runs no exceptions. No exceptions. Now, let's, let's change the cards a little bit. I'm going to say var rand d gets new random. And I'm going to try to produce a random bool. So I'll say base b gets randy, randy.next, mod 2 equals 0. Okay, let me actually make that a little more readable. Bool, random bool. Gets, hey, randy, go next. Is that, if that's equal to 0, it's going to be random true or false. Right? If hopefully modulus, and I'm checking that equal and 2. Hopefully this makes sense to you. If not, go watch those videos on that. I have a random bool. Okay, and let's use the ternary operator here. If the random bool is true, then let's create a new base. Else, let's create a new derived. Alright, so when we get down here, B could be referencing this new base, or it could be referencing this new derived. But, 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 if it's referencing a base, then I can't be so sure right here. It might be a base, might be... I'm, I can't, as a programmer, be as sure as I'm being right here anymore because all of a sudden now there's some randomness to us. Let's run this, control F5, and oh! Oh, it bombed! Alright? Unable to cast object to type base to derived. Let's run this a few more times. Hey, that time it didn't break. Yeah, that time we got lucky we got a derived. Alright, now I want to point out to you what happens when we do this type of cast and it fails. We get an exception, and exceptions have overhead, and they have their own semantics, and they can jump around in the program, up the call stack, and blah, blah, blah. Go look at the exceptions videos if you really want to learn all the details about exceptions. But it's an error. Okay, it exploded in our face. When I'm teaching this in a class, I'll generally pick up something heavy and throw it at somebody and say, hey, look, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't ignore that exception, could you? You had to catch it, or you had to let it hit you in the head, and you didn't want it to let you, you didn't want to let it hit you in the head, so you stopped it. Anyway, you cannot ignore these. Okay, so since we're unsure, and when we are unsure, we want to do something besides get an exception. That's painful. We want to instead kind of check and say, hey, uh, if it is a derived, then convert it to a derived, and if it's not, that's fine. I'll just deal with it and do something differently. Please don't throw a book at my face. All right, and the way we do that in C Sharp is we say, hey, instead of a hardcore cast like that, we say B as derived. All right, and now I'm saying, hey, Try to do the cast. If it doesn't work, then just return null. And that's exactly what as does. It performs the cast ex identical to how I had it before, but if the cast fails, instead of throwing an exception in our face, it returns null. So now I can say, hey, if d is equal to null, then console write line, oh, well, that failed. Okay. Else, cw, we got an object. All right, but either way, I'm not going to have that exception blow up in my face. So, control F5. Look at this. This time we got an object. Very cool. Let's try it again. Hey, it failed that time. But no exception. Okay, notice we didn't get the nasty, hey, uh, Windows, your program failed to execute. What should I do? Should I send a report off to Microsoft? They must have billions of those by now. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's the as operator, and there's really nothing much more to say about that.